This is the new X Mighty Air Digital Modeling Practice Amplifier. It has so many different effects built into such a small unit. Let's see how it sounds. Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. Today we're checking out this new X Mighty Air Amplifier. It's a practice amp loaded with an actual transmitter as well, which you can charge via this. I think that's pretty cool. Let's take a look. Here's the amplifier up close. Now this is a stereo amplifier. If I get this on the right angle, you might be able to see we've got a round speaker over here. In the center, we have a custom bass port just to allow the amp to sound a little bit more full for its size. So I'm gonna have this mic'd up in stereo, which is what you heard also in the intro. Now this comes with a transmitter as well, which you can charge just simply by plugging it into the top of the amp. And on the back of the amp as well, we get a USB-C type port over here and the cable is provided, which is fantastic. If you, if you so choose, you can charge the transmitter by using a micro USB cable, but it's not included. But the easiest way to charge it is just to plug it in and then plug the back of the amp into, the, into anything that supports basically USB charging. So a computer, phone charger, whatever you like. Now this, believe it or not, is a full-blown digital modeling amplifier. You use an app to control it, much like the Fender Mustang, and you get all the different types of amplifiers, pedals, effects, reverbs, delays, everything. So this is a much more in-depth amplifier than the previous one. The other one was fantastic. It was one of my favorite practice amps of all time. There's a lot to like about this one, and there's also a few things that I wanna make note of in this video as we go, and also at the end, I'll give you my full thoughts, but. The idea of this, or the, the basic principle, is to use the app to set up some tones that you really like, as there's a few different channels, clean, crunch, distortion, and acoustic, and there's also some bass ones. And then you can just recall them by using this channel button on the top. So you push this and it, it brings or recalls those presets. As the light changes over here, you know what channel you're on. So once you've got it set up, it's really cool. You can stream music to it, all that kind of thing as well. It's got built-in drums, lots of effects, IRs, you can't import third-party IRs, but it has, at least not to my knowledge, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments, but to my knowledge, the, the speaker IRs can be swapped. So you can use, say, a Fender-style head with a Marshall-style cab or whatever you choose to use, and I'll show you some of that in this video. 
A massive thanks to NewX for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. If you want to find out more about this, links will be in the description below. I'll give you my full thoughts about this at the end. Always remember, these little amps are practice amplifiers. They're never going to sound as big as a Boss Katana or a Fender Blues Deluxe or anything like that. I'm going to mic it up in a way that would represent what you're hearing in the room from a little bit of a distance back. The mics are close, but the gain's low, and I've got two matching microphones in XY configuration to hopefully share with you the sort of the tones I'm getting. As this is a stereo amp, some of the effects will actually go between the speakers. It's pretty cool. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Today I'm playing my PRS SE Custom 24. This is all stock. I've already got the transmitter in the bottom of the guitar here. Going to the amplifier, which isn't plugged in. It's got the rechargeable battery. So it's sitting up on my desk, mic'd up with two Rode NT3 microphones in XY configuration. So you're gonna hear if some of the effects are in stereo, you'll hear that if you're wearing headphones. It's pretty cool. So the mono iPhone uh, speaker won't hear it in stereo. So put some headphones on or listen through some speakers. This is neck pickup on the clean tone. And for this amp, I've set up the Jazz 120. This is like a, a jazz chorus. We have the same or matching IR for the speaker and the reverb is set to spring. We also have a noise gate on, which doesn't really matter now that I'm playing humbuckers, but I had that set up in the intro. So here we go, neck pickup. Now, believe it or not, this is actually my favorite amp. In the intro, I used the twin reverb because I figured this would be my favorite, but it isn't. I don't like this anywhere near as much as the jazz chorus. It lacks warmth is the best way to put it. But let's have a listen to it anyway. This is neck pickup still, same thing. So the twin has this inherently sort of hard tone about it, and that's what that is. Now that doesn't sound great on its own, but we can also stack effects on it, and that's where it sort of shines. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Back to the amp settings. I'm gonna switch this up and go to the Tweed Deluxe. So this one is already on the verge of clipping. Tweed amps sort of pushed hard, have a bit more mids, and have a bit more dirt. Let's take a listen. So if you're in a tweet amps, you've got that option as well. So what we can do now, if we go back to the, the uh, twin, we're gonna add an overdrive. We've got touch wire, uni vibe, all these different effects we can add to this clean channel. So this is how it sounds clean again. And now with the tube screamer, and I've got the gain all the way up, why not? And then we've got the tone at 83%, here we go. Helps if I turn it on. Let's try this. Now I'm not sure if you can hear that on the, on the recording, but I can clearly hear it that the speakers can't handle that much volume. So I'm gonna bring the level down. And this is one of the things with this amplifier, you have to set the level right so the speakers don't physically distort. It's still plenty loud, but some of the patches, as you add effects to it, you need, just need to bring the overall level down. Let's try it again. Let's try one of the other effects. We'll swap it over to the fuzz. All right. Let's crank the level up a bit on this one because this is a pretty low gain sort of fuzz. Uh, low volume, not gain, it's got plenty of gain. Now to me that still sounds a little bit too thin. If we change the amp back to the jazz or the tweed, it's gonna sound heaps better. Let's take a listen. So 
so there you have it. Using a different combination of amp with certain effects are definitely going to bring out the best of each of them. And one of the cool little tricks I'm going to show you now is just by changing the speaker IR, you're going to get a vastly different sound. So even what we just had before, let's change this over to maybe the twin and you'll hear the difference. So I don't like that anywhere near as much. Let's try the GB412. I think this is the greenback one. So like any modeling amp, you can match this head with that speaker cabinet and all that kind of stuff. So it has that functionality built into it, which I like as well. And just for kicks now with this type of tone, let's fire up the delay. So that's actually pretty fun to play like that, but you don't get that much gain out of this channel running the pedals. I mean, the fuzz is pretty high gain, but there's no other options for like overdrives on the clean. You have to go over to the overdrive channel, which is pretty cool. So we get a few different amplifiers we can choose from. There's three, there's Plexi, Top Boost, 30, which you want to avoid, <laughs> and Lead 100. Now this Plexi one is the one that you heard on the intro, and I actually really like this one. We'll change up the reverb to, oh, it's actually set to Hall already, which is good and we'll see how this sounds now. We're gonna start on bridge pickup for this one. So that's a great tone already. Now, if we go over to the lead 100, I'll save the best till last. Well, the best till last it should be. So let's give this a shot. This is not a tone that I really like a lot, but some people might like it. Now it's a nice fat tone, but it's not really my kind of thing. Let's try another delay. We'll go to the ping pong one. Here we go. Turn it on. I always forget to do that. Now I can hear this one also kind of bottoming out the speakers, so I'm just going to turn the level down, which is the output volume. Let's try this. Hope you can hear that sort of that ping pong stereo delay thing going on there. That's pretty cool. All right, over to the next amp, which I saved to last this Top Boost 30. I'll turn the delay off for the moment and bask in its glory. Here we go. Just with the stock uh, speaker IR, it just sounds pretty terrible. So let's find another one. We'll go V1960. Uh, Now that's definitely not my kind of sound still, it's just way too bright, uh, even for a Vox, it just lacks a little bit of niceness. So this is my least favorite one. And lastly, I've just changed it over to the BS410, this is a 410 IR, and we're going to see if this helps as well. It just sounds a little quacky or something, I don't really like that at all. But it's there, if you, if you like that tone, go for it. But in my opinion, the best amp from this overdrive section is the Plexi. It's just a plug and play type of sound, no questions about it. And now I've just added some tape delay and changed up the reverb to a plate. Let's take a listen. Very cool. Let's go to the effects section. So we can add a boost, a touch wah, which I actually really like this one. You just got to sort of turn everything up to make it function a little bit better. Here we go. Ooh, 
Let's try this tone now with some delay, some reverb, and also the Tube Screamer. Here we go. <laughs> Here at bottoming out again, which kind of sucks. So you just got to watch the levels if you want pristine tone. It doesn't matter if you're just jamming, but if you want to record well, you've just got to make, get the balance right as you add stuff. <laughs> Now just to correct that and bringing that output down, it's next to indistinguishable the difference in volume. So it's pretty cool like that. All right. Over to my Gibson Les Paul loaded with two P90 pickups and we're going over to the distortion channel of the amplifier which has three different amps. And we're starting on the Dive VH4, which is probably one of my favorite ones of these. So let's give this a shot. We're just gonna do some big chords. that I hinted at a few songs but mixed them up to avoid any issues but yeah you get the idea that one I really like let's go over to the fireman which I believe is based on Friedman now this one from memory is pretty bright so I'm gonna bring down the tone bring up the gain let's try this see how it sounds <laughs> Might be one of my favorites actually on the whole amp. It's really good. Over to the recto. Sounds nasty. <laughs> All right, I can hear the speaker bottoming out a little bit. I'm going to bring that down, bring the gain up, bring the bass down, bring the mids up a little bit. A little bit more treble. Here we go. It's still bottoming out. Level down. Now that sounds good, but it still it has that issue where the speakers can't handle it once you crank it up. So you just gotta watch the volume. And I think some of these presets are a little louder than others just because of the amount of gain as well. That one's definitely got more gain. Now, I noticed I was still getting buzz, as you can probably hear. Bit of single coil loving right there because my heater's on right over here. So, let's turn up the threshold. And now the buzz is gone. Pretty much, it's still there a little bit. There you go, 79, can't hear it. Whew. Over to my Harley Benton bass guitar, let's give this a go. And one of the cool things about this new X amp is it also has a drum track. I gotta warn you though, if you get one of these amplifiers and you play bass, just delete all the presets that it come with. They're just, they don't sound very good. I've made these ones from scratch. It's nice and simple to do. If you want to save it, just simply hit save, and then it will save it to the amp on that particular bank. Well, not bank, it's just that preset, nice and simple. So what we want to do now is actually go back to the drum machine, and we're going to come up with a bit of a tap tempo thing at about 100 beats per minute, somewhere around there. I'm going to hit go. Now if we take a look on screen, each of these three settings right here have the same amp models attached to them with just different effects added. So we'll just stick on the pop one and line up a different amp. So we're gonna to go to the AGL now. Distorting again. I don't know why they come with the gain so cranked up so high. 
and level down. That actually sounds pretty good. Let's go back to the drums. We'll get a different feel now. Let's go to, let's go to swing. Maybe this will be, we'll get it going. 140 beats per minute. We're gonna wing this, so fingers crossed. That's a jazz swing, I can't play jazz. Let's do a blues swing. Now, if you're an actual bass player, unlike myself, <laughs> you'll definitely get some work uh, use out of this. And the cool thing is you don't just have to use a metronome. It's there if you want to use it, but you don't have to use it. There's heaps of different settings. Metronome, pop, metal, blues, swing, which is that jazz one, rock, ballad rock, which is probably 6-8, funk, rhythm and blues. Oh, let's do one more. It's kind of fun. Let's try this one. R&B. So you get the point, that's way too fast for me to play it on bass, I can't play that fast, but yeah, you can change the tempo just by hitting the tap like this, it's great. So that's one really great thing to practice to, practice to something as opposed to just noodling around and you, you'll improve, whether that's guitar or bass, and it will definitely encourage you to play better playing on time or playing to something, so that's pretty cool. Lastly, I was gonna show you just how cool it is to play along with music coming from your phone to the amplifier and then jam along with it. But because of the screen recording software, I can't do it. It won't let me do it, I'm spewing. So yeah, that's pretty much the end of it, but there's lots of possibilities. Like I mentioned at the start, if you find something that you like and you've got a setup that you really dig, you can just hit save and it, then it will remember it on the amplifier. I think that's really cool. Same with the overdrive settings and so forth. Thing is, if you want to then modify it again, you're gonna to have to break out the app. But if you just want to play along or play, just plug in and play, you can do that without having to fire up your phone. And for me, that's a cool thing. You can play some music back through other speakers if you so choose to do that, or just through the actual uh, phone. So yeah, overall, it's pretty cool. It's also got an auxiliary in. If you've got a different device, you just want to plug into it. So there you go. Sorry I couldn't show you that, but the video is probably long enough. Thanks for watching, folks. This is Shane. A massive thanks goes out to NewX for sending this out for the review. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna cover some of the pros and cons and what do I think about it in comparison to the BT, which is the smaller one of these which I love. That was one of the best practice amps I'd ever had a chance to test, and there's one sitting right over there. We might do a comparison. So in terms of what I think of this, there's some really usable tones in here, but not all of them. So that you'll pick your favorites and you'll just stay away from the others. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with how it handled the high gain tones and the clean tones once I found models that I liked. The downside of it is that some of them just the way that they're set, or if you add effects to them, is enough to bottom out these tiny little speakers. So you do get some speaker distortion if you're not careful. If you're playing music back through it, you might not hear it as much, but you just gotta be careful not to overdo the volume on each of the patches, because I found like a lot of time between shots, I had to just adjust the volume or gain because these speakers couldn't handle it, but it's a tiny little amplifier. So I'm not expecting too much out of it, but I found sometimes I had to drop it back to about 50% volume, so it didn't make any distortion out of the speakers. It's still loud enough for practice use, but just keep that in mind. That's kind of stopping me from saying it's the perfect little practice amp, but it's great. I love the fact that it actually has really usable or 11 really usable drum tracks, plus the metronome as well. So you can jam along with bass or guitar and just have something to play to. I think that's awesome. 
So the way I plan on using this is to set up a clean tone, an overdrive and a distortion and save it into the amplifier, maybe with some delay on one of them or whatever. And then you can just simply access them by pushing this LED on the front, this button here. And as you can see, it lights up in different colors and they represent the different channels. So overall, the functionality of this is great and the app works extremely well. It's one of the best apps for any of these devices I've had a chance to use. It just simply works and the same can be said for the prior one as well the uh, Mighty Light BT. It's an awesome app and it just works and the functionality, they've actually put some thought into it. If you've ever used an app for a modeling amplifier, I would say this is probably the best app for any of these type of amps out there. A massive thanks to NewX for sending this out. I really appreciate it. If you wanna find out more about it, links will be in the description below. I really like what this is capable of. I just don't like all of the sounds in there, but once you get it set up the way you like it, you can plug and play and that's what it's all about. It's just about playing more than it is about tinkering with stuff. So there's definite tones in here that work well. And I really like what I got in the intro track, especially on some of the lead tones and some of those sort of clean tones, as well as some of the chord parts as well. It all kind of sounded okay to my ear considering this is a really small amp. So let me know your thoughts. Thanks again, catch you soon. See ya.